sewing. I just kind of wanted a new hobby. Like, I had, um, I just came out of a relationship and I was like, you know, we really like, right, let's change the life up a wee mm-hmm. bit, let's mm-hmm. improve my quality of life. So I started with going, like I tried every hobby under the sun really, I tried to learn a language, mm-hmm. couldn't do it. I um, tried to read books, wasn't really my thing. Then I was like going hikes and I kind of liked the hiking side, but I was like, when you go hiking, obviously you want to take photos to show everybody like where you've been. So it was that point where I thought, maybe I'll upgrade from, I actually upgraded my phone first to get a better camera. Mm. So like I upgraded my phone and then I was like, right, I still kind of want to upgrade my quality of images. So then I bought a camera and then after buying the camera, I realized it wasn't really the hiking that I liked, it was the photos that I liked. Right. So I stopped hiking and then just um, started like mixing up with different types of photography really. And that's kind of how it happened. What was the first camera you got? Um, It was a Canon 70D. Right. With like basic lens it's like it's an alright camera it's it's a decent beginner's camera and how long did it take like, for you to change from that camera to something else and then actually go see, around I'm, like, I'm one of those types of guys where i'm always trying to get something better right so like it will last me a while but then i'm always like hey, what's the next step what's the next step so i had that for like eight, eight months I think. And then I had shot a wedding. I was starting to pick up a few bit, like not massively, but I was getting a few paid jobs. Yeah. And then I got a wedding that was going to be in Scottish wedding magazine. Not bad. And it was way above. It was way above. It seems to be like you always get jobs that are like way above your skill level. Well, you think, like I always think I shouldn't be doing this job. <laughs> so like I was panicking. I did the job stressful I bought a new lens for it and the images turned out good but when you're a photographer you you can always see things that can be better you critique and everything. I, realized, I realized the camera like even though I had a new lens the camera was not equipped for like the lighting because it was like it was in Glen Eagles hotel mm-hmm. so it was some of the rooms were really dark there was a lot of people moving about and just the camera like it did the job but I knew it could have been better and at that point I was like right I'm going to do my best work I need to upgrade my camera but I've upgraded so many times from then yeah, yeah. I just keep I think I just keep um upgrading and upgrading just because that's the type of guy I just like to keep changing you know. like, Changing up and getting better stuff. All part of the uh, Do you do analog and digital? Yeah, so I started with digital. I just need to put my phone in here. Um, I started with digital and I loved digital at the start, but I don't know. I kind of wanted to get into film. I was seeing a lot of film photographers from America and I like to look and then I went into 35 mil that everybody seems to get into first. Mm-hmm. But again, me being the type of guy where something's not good enough for me, the 35 mil wasn't good enough. It was it wasn't as good quality as I knew I could get. And at that point I jumped all in again. I just jumped in for like I did it for digital as well. I jumped from the Canon 70 d to the Sony A7 III. So I jumped from entry level to like not top of the line but it was up there as one of the good cameras to have and then with film I did the same I jumped from 35 mil straight into like a really good 120 camera and then I just enjoy the process more on film so for my own personal stuff I'll always pick film 
Yeah. But sometimes digital has its uses. So there's some things you can't do on film where you need to use digital. For most client work, unless a lot of client work, if they come to me for film, I'll kind of offer them both choices so they like, have an idea of what they want. But personally, I'll always pick film, I think. Um, and do you, wait, do you say you shoot medium format or just 35 mil? I shoot both. Um, oh. So I've upgraded my 35 mil camera now, but I tend to mainly shoot medium format. I'm and really trying to, at some point I'll probably get into large format, but the cost of it is just ridiculous. And large format? Yeah. That's completely out like, things. I have no idea how that even works, large format. So, like it's £10 a roll for 120 which gets you 10 shots. But for large format, it's £50 per pack of film, which gets you 10 shots. Yeah. So Sad. you end up going from paying £10 for 10 shots to paying £10 for one. Yeah. So that's the, the money starts to get a wee bit wild. And um, yeah, I'm guessing that's quite niche stuff. That's more like for for like your own sort of like personal projects rather than I'm no yeah. I'm asking for for that, are they? No, nobody like nobody would come to you and ask to shoot large format. Yeah. It's like unheard of. I mean large format's great for billboard work. So there's a couple of photographers in America they'll shoot large format portraits and you can blow them up to the size of billboards but it's pretty rare but it's more a sort of if you were going to create a book you could do it on medium format but you some people do it on large format just because it's a higher quality image right and some people just prefer the large format look as well yeah what is it about like medium format that you enjoy? So it's like, there's a different size between the negatives. On 35 mil, the negative is quite small. But on medium format, it's a lot larger. So you get a lot more detail in it and you just get a higher quality image and the depth as well. And the image is, well, we call it focus is a lot more stronger and that's why people like large format because the book are in depth and large formats crazy and it's like if you were to take a portrait on large format the background would just be a complete blur mm. there would be there would be nothing in the background really and the person standing there would be just like it's hard to describe but it would just look completely different because they would stand out so much. Mm -hmm. You don't really get that on 35 mil and you get a wee bit in medium format but not as much. What's your uh, it's like what's your go-to camera right now? Um I use the Mamiya RZ67. Right. So I had the I had my first medium format was the Mamiya 645 which gives you 16 shots and it's a smaller negative, it's sort of in between. Right. So if you're going to start a camera for everybody, it's in between 35mm and medium format. So it's like a nice mix. And then I went from that to the Pentax 67. But I didn't really like the Pentax, it's a great camera, but it just wasn't working for me. So then I switched. I bought the RB 67, so I had both the Pentax and the RB. But there's a lens on the RZ that can only fit on the RZ. So mm -hmm. I thought, well, I'm not really liking the Pentax. What I'll do is sell the Pentax and take the money and buy the RZ and just commit to mm -hmm. the Mimia. Which is like, I just prefer it. It's, like, it's a different sort of style of shooting on the Mimia. Right. See, if someone's like, into photography a little bit, right? They're shooting like digital right now. 
and they're like, I kind of want to like dabble with um, film. Would you recommend them just be like jump into like thirty five mil or foot or uh, like what what would you recommend? Like what would you what would your guide to getting into film be? Sometimes I think people jump too much into a certain type of photography because it's niche. Mm. If you know what I mean, like a lot of people will jump into film just because it's popular instead of trying to like understand the, the basics, understand the basics, and like know what you want to shoot first. So a lot of people don't know what they want to shoot if they want to be a portrait photographer, a food photographer, landscape photographer. And I don't think cameras matter that much. Yeah. Like the camera is the least important thing. The main important thing is what you want to shoot, your creativity, the sort of vision, the light that you use. They're all more important. But like once you've kind of got all that, and you know where you're going. I would say start with 35 mil as fun. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, just that's what I did. I had a 35 mil camera that I just used to shoot in pubs. You know what I mean? Like in my pocket for fun, mm-hmm. like nightclubs and stuff like that. It wasn't serious. It was just for fun. And then, like, go from maybe a point and shoot to like a fully manual. 35 mil and then once you kind of got that and you kind of understand how that works i'd say jump to a 645 because a 645 is you just get more photos so it's less chance of like you don't you don't want to spend 10 pound on a roll for 10 photos and you only get like three like my first roll of medium format was 16 photos and I only got one photo mm. that came out like not even it wasn't even usable like it was bad but it, it's hard to like learn so I say don't like don't rush it mm. like, like fine tune everything else and then once you think you can handle it because nobody wants to spend Nobody wants to go on a photo shoot with your friend, spend 30 pounds on 30 photos and come back and realise you've messed up two rolls and the other rolls only got a couple of images and you spend 30 pounds on a film, 30 pounds on development, 60 pounds to get told that they're all pretty much useless. I fell away from film at the start because of that. I shot a 35 mil roll to get to a lab and they said, oh, it's blank. Completely mm. blank. Yeah. And I was like, just wasted my time, wasted my money, lost my photos. So then I stopped shooting for, stopped shooting film for like three months. And then fine tuned everything else. And then thought, oh, do you know what? I'll give it a try again. And then that kind of how it went from there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I totally agree with you. Like, it definitely is just a tool. It's just a tool that helps you create what you want to create rather than the thing that you're focusing on. Um, speaking of that, actually, like, see the uh, the last one you kind of did, like, on your website. Um, I think it's called the AK Forty Seven. Yeah. Like, how? What was the creative process behind that? Like, what's who decides? Like, am I? Like, you just wake up one morning, you're like, right, I've got a vision. That's what I want to create, and then you just go out and create it. So, like, I sometimes just if I'm out or about. And I just an idea pops in my head, and I think to myself that would be wild to shoot. So like obviously I've seen some photos of American people shooting AKs and guns, mm. but obviously in Scotland it's a wee bit different. You don't have in the UK you can't really get your hands on a gun. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like so I thought <laughs> to myself it would be pretty wild if I could do a shoot with a model with a gun because it's not really been seen in Scotland that much. So it's always about trying to take ideas and create something that's different. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's more about what you create rather than what you use to create it. So I had it in my head for ages and I thought to myself, 
I don't know where I'm going to get a gun, so it kind of like went on the back burner. Like I've always got ideas in my head, but they're always I just let them sit there for a while until I'm thinking, right, I need to create something. Let's use one of these ideas. So I happen to know a guy that collects swords. Like he's a sword collector and stuff like that. And he's like, and I put up on my Facebook. It was a long shot. I put up on my Facebook. Does anybody have a gun or a machete? <laughs> I mean, honestly, you don't ask, you don't get. You know what I mean? People right. on my Facebook must think I'm, I'm wild because some of the stuff I'll ask if anybody's got stuff, they're like, what is this guy all about? But I just put it out there and then he messaged me and he was like, I've got an AK-47. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no way. I was like, are you joking? I was like, is it real? He's like, it's real. It's been welded at the bit where you cock the thing to fire it. So it was a real AK-47. So here I have a guy with a real AK-47 that stayed five minutes down the road from me. That's madness. And I thought to myself, this is perfect. You know what I mean? This is lined up exactly how I imagined it. And then I knew the model that I'd shot Faye. And mm. I just knew that she would be up for it because Faye's great to work with. So I messaged her and I said, I've got an idea. I've got a bad clava and an AK-47. And she was like, I'm definitely down. And I knew it would work. And it just kind of happened. But the thing is, it had been sat in my head for like a good six months. Yeah. It just if I hadn't put out and reached out that crazy Facebook post trying to find an AK forty seven in Glasgow, it would have never have worked. But you just kinda of have to put yourself out there and take the deep dive. Hope for the best. Yeah. Um like are these just things you just like doing just for, for like the sake of creating art in a sense? Yeah, it's just to create really. But it, like, it, it happens for all shoots. So I did a shoot with a music producer slash DJ that wanted to get some new photos. And we were out walking in Glasgow at night taking photos. And I had always wanted to shoot a portrait inside a shop, mm. like inside a, just a corner shop. But I knew that supermarkets like Tesco and Morrison's, they won't let you do that. Mm. And I walked past a, just a corner shop in Glasgow. And I said to him, I was like, that's so bad. I was like, I'm going to go in, I'm just going to ask him. So I went in and I said to him, I was like, look, can I take some photos? There's a guy in here. And he's just like, yeah, cool, no problem. And that was the best photo from the shoot. Me and that guy both agreed. It was like the best shot. But it would have never happened if I hadn't have gone in and just asked the guy. You know what I mean? Like it wouldn't have been possible. So I think. I always think the best photos are the ones where you take a wee bit of a risk and you just step outside your comfort zone a wee bit and go for it. Create something wild. So, see, like prior to you actually like getting into photography, did you ever study anything like that? No, you never did. No, anything like no. the deep dive. Started learning it as like a a hobby and then became a hustle and no. that was a job. No, so. I dropped out of school when I was 15. Right. Uh, I just left. School wasn't for me. And I think it, I think, I think creative people like are always kind of creative. They just don't know it. So mm. like in school, I was always better at the hands-on subjects, like the making and stuff. I was never really that good at essays and English and maths. But you could put me in like woodwork. And I'd be fine. Mm. And then I dropped out at 15 because I didn't really like school at all and just started working normal jobs. So I went from like supermarket jobs to warehouse jobs. And then after my relationship, I was like just trying to like learn new things and like better myself. And it just happened to click. And then it started as a hobby. And then I kind of realized I'm actually half decent at this. Like, I'm all right at this. So let's keep it going. 
And it kind of just went from there. But I had no, like, I've never really been the type to, like, learn and teach myself anything. I've just kind of been getting by in life. <laughs> That's all it is, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so see when you like went and did your first like gig for photography, you got your like first paycheck for photography, did it like kind of change the way you looked at it a wee bit? I actually turned up and I did the shoot and I thought to myself, I can't believe somebody's paying me for this. <laughs> like it's, it's such a surreal moment because <laughs> it's like imagine doing something for fun that anybody can do. You know what I mean? Like if anybody can pick up a camera and teach yourself how to use it, I guess some people are just have a wee bit more like of a vision. So I just learned it and picked up camera and I thought to myself, I can't believe someone's paying me to do that. This is great. And then it kind of just went from there. But it is very surreal to like get paid to do something that you like to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, a unique position to be in, I guess, you know. Um, do, it's a very like, hard position because as much as you think people, like, why are people paying me to do this? A lot of people don't want to pay either, which is, like, the worst thing in the creative industry is people trying to, like, hire you for free or, like, wanting to shoot for free. And it's, like, it's one of the hardest jobs. And I it's hard to be a full time photographer. I'm not a full time. I've got other jobs that I do. You pretty much have to work like two to three jobs to like make it work. Two to three jobs, are they still like freelance creative jobs? Or do you mean like actual like sort of real? Well, take, so, like, I'll do, I do film development. Mm, right. For people that take a little bit. Then I've got photography jobs, but then I'll also do like a normal, like, I guess it's a freelance sort of job. I'll do like a bit of just eat or whatever, to, like bring some cash in because some months you will not get any jobs, mm. especially in a pandemic. It's like I had a job that was for four days where they paid like my month's wage, and that's been pushed back in December and I don't even know if it's going to go ahead anymore. So like it does, it is pretty hard. And I think so like you know, feel like it feels really hard. Do freelancers get no compensation, uh, like any furlough or anything like that from the government? Not that I know of. I don't. And I know some other people that don't. I know a guy that did get a creative grant at the start. The government gave him a little bit of money. Right. I'm not too sure on that. I don't think they do. Mm. Um, yeah, I just thought maybe like, if it's like, you I guess you're a business owner, it runs under a business to some degree. Yeah. I think it depends like, what sort of level you are. I've got no idea about that. I don't know if you would need to be registered as like a proper company instead of a sole trader. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's all beyond me. I have no idea any of this. No, no idea either. Um so when you, you like started to get into photography, you transitioned from like job into like this is it, this is or a transition from hobby into like this is like something for me. Um like did you have any like influences or like people you looked up to that were photographers or like creatives? There was definitely a lot of creatives in Glasgow that were around me at the time that I was looking to and influenced me quite a bit and we kind of grew as friends and stuff and then there was just like obviously I look at a lot of creatives everywhere in the world and kind of see where they're going. But I think you kind of have to follow your own path with it. And find out what you want to do. A lot of photographers will message me and ask me, like, how they found how I found my style, or how I know, like, I want to be a portrait photographer rather than 
aware than a photographer. And I think it's just down to like you have to try everything. Yeah. You, you enjoy the most, you don't like, and then just it's your own path sort of thing. So you've got to like figure it out for yourself, really. But no, like, uh, so no direct, like, these are some people that I like to like uh, look at to see where they're going, what's happening with them, or even people that don't work anymore, like old photographers, like the pioneers of like analog and digital and stuff. And then those that you kind of like, there's a little bit of you or them and you in a sense. Yeah, so like, I've got a few big photographers that are like my main inspiration. So like, London, in London, there's Rosie Matheson. She did the um, boys project. And it's like photos of guys, portraits of them that I really like. And then there's some others like Dean Martindale. Who shoots like a lot of Nike and North Face campaigns on film. Right. And then there's some classics like Alex Soth. Yeah, I've got a few of his books. And then even some older ones that aren't around anymore. Which I like a lot to them. But I think Rosie Matheson's probably my biggest mm -hmm. influence. Yeah. I just kind of like the natural like portrait. She does with guys. Mm. And it's just something, it was something that I think a lot of photographers don't do. Uh, I guess because it's bad to say, but I think it's true that you get a lot of photographers that do it for the wrong reason. And a lot of photographers will only shoot female models because they're female. And that's a guy. And I think I think it should be a wee bit like fairer. Mm. And not a lot of many people shoot guys. And I I love shooting guys because it's it's easy. Cause I'm a guy, we relate, you know what I mean? We've got things in common. But I do think there's a lot of photographers that just focus on I'm just gonna shoot like girls all the time. Right. Or like the opposite sex. So there's like kind of sleazy guys in the industry. Oh, there is. There's, there's a lot. I don't know any personally. Well, thankfully, like every photographer I've met in real life have been solid people, and I respect them a lot. But there is like you do see the whole movements going on with a lot of photographers who are maybe like higher in level that are getting called out. I think every industry's kind of got that movement that's happened over the last year, which I think is great. You know what I mean? I'm all for it. Um, yeah, no, I totally agree. Like, there's a big wave happening, a big change occurring, and it's good because it yeah. does cleans up the industry in a sense, or many industries. Um, yeah. Yeah. Would you? Do you have any like? Uh, words of wisdom that you'd pass on to people that are aspiring photographers? I would say just keep shooting and try different things and don't get caught up with what everybody else is doing. I think you, the worst thing you can do is look at other people's work too much and then compare yourself to them and then start to like feel bad about your own work. Mm. I think that's probably the worst thing you can do. And I've been guilty of myself where I've looked at people's work and I've thought, I'm never going to hit that level. But I think you better just keep going. Try different ways of shooting and always learn. I still learn. Like, I try to teach myself something new every week, especially in lockdown. Mm -hmm. You've always got to keep progressing. And I think once you get to the point where you think, I've said this before to a lot of photographers, that I hate my own photos after like a week. So like, I look at my Instagram and like, I'm not like them based on how I've shot them. Mm -hmm. But I'll have a couple that I still kind of like. But for the most part, after like a week or two, 
I won't like them. And if you think that your work is always great and you always look at it like that's a great photo, that's a great photo, you're never going to learn. You're never going to like you're never going to progress so i think it's always good to keep looking back at your stuff and see where you came from and see what you can change yeah and constantly there's nothing worse there's nothing worse than like it's like a game really it's like once you complete a game i mean the fun's over isn't it mm. you kind of want to keep going so you just got to keep learning keep pushing and keep trying new things yeah um and last question: Where do you uh, where do you see yourself going with photography, or in general? Hopefully, like I set myself pretty harsh goals. Like over the last two years, I've been really goal like orientated. So, like when I first started, it was like first year, hit a thousand followers, get some more paid work. And I hit a thousand five hundred or something. And then the next year it was like no, I hit two thousand, I think it was, because I told myself I'll try double it. So I'd like surpassed my goal by like a thousand and I got to like two thousand odd. And I said, right, two thousand nineteen to two thousand twenty. Let's double it again. Let's hit five thousand. And I did that. And then I kind of fell away from Instagram because I think everybody gets caught up too much with it. Mm. And it's not like Instagram's not the be all and end all photography. It's just somewhere to put your work. So then I started to set my goals like bigger in scale. So I've got long term goals. Like my main one is to work with companies like Nike, like really long term, like massive end game goals. To work for like Nike or North Face or like try to get some really big clients, try to get some like big exposure, and hopefully I'll get there. But yeah, I've pretty big goals. I've got some stuff coming this year that like some achievements that I'll have, but I can't really talk about at the moment. So like it's start heading in the right way, but it's a long process. The entire thing is like, I think people start photography and they think, oh, a year or two, I'll be, I'll be there, I'll be at that spot. It's not going to happen. It's, unless you are like magically gifted and you become like the great photographer. There's so many people with cameras, it's hard to get noticed. Yeah. And it's like a long term. So it's a long term, always trying to get better and grow. And I think you just kind of need to roll with it and just know that maybe you will get to work for Nike, but it won't be any time in the next five years. It's going to be like, if you're lucky enough to get there, it'll be a long time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but I mean, you don't get there without trying. You seem to be doing pretty damn good. So I think you've got it. That's it. Always, you've always got to, you've always got to keep trying, and like don't give up. There's been there was times where I didn't get any paid jobs. I still there's times now where I still don't get any paid jobs. I can go like two months, three months without somebody wanting to hire me because there are so many people doing it, and it's hard to get noticed. But if I was just to give up, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll not get anywhere. You kind of just have to commit. Take your time, enjoy the ride, and just learn as much as you can. What's the love line? That's that. um, this has been brilliant. Thank you. Like, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. It's been my pleasure. Um, do you want to like plug your socials and stuff like that? Yeah. So my Instagram's just Andy Low Photo, and then I've got a link on my Instagram to my YouTube. So yeah. It's got a couple of videos that I'm trying to work on this year. And then my link to my website's on Instagram as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, check them out.